What's up guys, Josh from Unique Amps here with more guitar amp modification goodness. In the last video, I compared the sound between the Celestian Greenback and the stock speaker in our custom 12 gauge amplifier project. And at the end of the video, I mentioned that next time we would be looking at the overdrive circuit and uh, seeing what we could do to modify it. However, some feedback from Gopal Kamath, apologize if I don't pronounce that right, suggested uh, that first to demonstrate the default sound versus the spring reverb and then the other modifications that I added to the other uh, custom 12 gauge um, from like over 10 years ago. So let's do that today. So before I divulge all of my precious candy making secrets, let's do a critical listening test. Take a listen to the project amp first. So I've got everything pretty much turned all the way down. Let's get everything it's at zero. I'm using my old Ibanez with the Illumitone humbuckers. Uh, set up, selected, uh, humbuckers selected. Start with the clean. Let's go up halfway. good in the audio. What I'll do later is uh, I'll connect up the microphone and capture some audio direct into my DI, uh, my DAW on my computer. So let's take a listen to the, the built-in effect again. So this one says delay reverb. Turn it up like a quarter. it over. That's delay. Reverb setting. And delay. So 
sounds kind of cheap. All right. Let's go over to the stock on the old one. So on this one too, you notice I've got extra knobs and a toggle switch. So the extra knobs are controls for my modifications. So let's listen to the stock. So yeah, similar to the to the reverb. Pretty much the same. Let's listen to the spring reverb. I'll show you this later. Oh, now it's not going to work. So I only have it connected to the tubes, that's what I did. to the solid state clean channel. I got connected to the tubes that I added. And I have to look at the circuit. We'll check out the circuit later because I don't remember what I did. Spring uh, Belton. I'll give you the model number later, and also where I got it and for how much. I think it was fifteen to twenty dollars. Take a look later. Sounds can almost be too much.
I've selected. This thing, we'll go over in a little bit. I've got two output tubes in a push pull configuration and one uh, dual triode. And I'm not sure how I have it selected, but we'll look. Oh, okay. So I've got. I think I connected these, connected it. This has got a switchable between the clean and the overdrive channel. So I think we've got the overdrive part of it driving the uh, the triodes <clears throat> when it's selected to the overdrive. Otherwise, it's just straight in. So let's turn that down for now. Let's compare. The overdrive. I'm going to leave the EQs alone. Back on humbucker. state.
noisy. This one's kind of noisy too, but not as. Yeah. Turn the solid state down. And what I do. It's actually quieter in the solid state, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So let's check out what I did on this whole thing. Yeah. See if it can work upside down so you can see what's going on. So there's a reverb tank. Hopefully it's focused. Let's try this. Like I said, a uh, three spring reverb. And let's first remove these tubes. So don't break them. So these are 12K fives. I don't see it on this one. Oh yeah, there it is. It'd be hard to see. See if I can do this with I need a couple extra hands. Twelve K five made in the USA. So either are new old stock tubes usually. All the twelve K fives are. So these were originally designed to be used in automotive automotive applications. So they're designed to run directly on 12 volts DC. So one cool aspect is you can play around with vacuum tubes at a low save voltage. So I just printed the data sheet for the 12K5 for a common reference. I don't know if you can even read that. It'd be too bright. Anyway, I will uh, leave a, I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, it's probably too bright. Anyway, it says um, 12K5 is a Tetra designed for space charge operation and Tetra service as a power amplifier driver where the potentials are obtained directly from a 12 volt automobile battery. Um, so the reason that this amplifier, <clears throat> or the tube outputs, though this is relatively quiet compared to the solid state, is because this is rated for um, 35 milliwatts. So in push-pull configuration, I probably would be lucky to produce 100 milliwatts. You know, compared to, I forget what these are rated, um, the solid state is but like 12 watts or 15 watts or something like that. Um, it's not just all about the power. It's also about the distortion that the tubes produce, the, the compression, etc., etc. Also, I believe this is the schematic. 
for what I did to this amp. But um, I'll check it out. I was doing, found a bunch of schematics with space charge kind of stuff, and also um, reverb. And I was doing some some um, overdrive circuits. I was doing a lot of space charge tube experimentation in like around 2007. All right, so put the tubes out of the way so don't break them. They're getting harder and harder to find. Nobody makes that number anymore. All right, so let's first pull the chassis out. One other cool thing about low voltage tubes and low voltage tube circuits is you really don't have to worry about say like um, any high voltage filter capacitors and it's pretty much uh, safe to work on um, after it's powered off. I mean I usually when I'm developing circuits on breadboard I'm just using the 12 volts and um, plug and play different components as I'm working on it. Not even a big deal. Can't even feel it. I think I'll pull the sockets off first. Ah. I'm out of practice. The size is too. What the heck? I guess if I get the fractional and not the metric. Used to be I could just look at a screw and grab the right size, but when I was using Allen wrenches every single day, but not so much anymore. Yeah. So these were these were stock. I don't know what they're for intended uh, for originally. But they came in handy for this. Oops. Don't want to break any of the wires. Alright, yep, so I just soldered. I did. Let's try to zoom. It's got a new camera lens here, so it's a Sigma 17 to 50 millimeter. I thought that might be a little easier to use for videos like this. Let's see. So I've got the looks like both the cathode. Oh, looks like the grid resistor. So that's input, ground, and then oh yeah. I added uh, ultraviolet LED in the middle, so that's what this resistor is, just limiting the current through that LED when this is active. So you got input there, I have to look at the pinout again. This is probably the output, the white wire. Blue is ground, and then brown is plus 12, I'm sure. Focus. Yep, same thing with the other one. So I'm using a one meg uh, grid resistor. That's what I have on the schematic. All right, so what else we got? Looks like I added a socket to the back of the chassis here. And I also, I was peeking under here earlier and these are wires coming off of uh, output transformer. So I believe I've got the speaker 
I've got the outputs connected in parallel, but we'll have to find out. Tolex a little bit. There you always want to be careful, of course, not to tug on anything or pull on anything. Crunch anything. Alright, yeah, so the way I got the 12 volts was I installed a power supply and then this is the oop, I think a 12 I don't remember what it is yeah 12 u7 so this is a dual triode similar to the 12 ax7 or 12 au7 but it's also designed to run on 12 volts. Yeah, this lens is kind of cool if I get used to how to work it. 12U7. So I think, in this case, I'm using it for both Using one uh, using one triode for amplification, then I'm using the other triode for uh, phase inverter. And then I've got the transformer mounted under here. Not sure how I did it. Let's find out. Tap the. I might have just tapped the laminations. I think that's what I did. Yep. So I don't even remember what this is exactly. Hmm. I'll try to go back through my my records and find out, but this is uh, obviously an output transformer, but I'm not sure what exactly it is. This might be a custom one actually. I was working with um, this guy, and actually I just bought some transformers from him um, for the next thing. Um, he's got a eBay store, uh, his name is Musical Matt. His store, I think his name is. Anyway, he built me some custom transformers uh, to use with the 12K5s back in 2007 or so. 2006, seven. So yeah, this one is. So you got the B plus. Oops. Orange is B plus, and I've got the. Let's go into this pink wire here, and then the other ones are labeled eight, sixteen, zero. So those are the speaker. This is a 8 and 16. I think this, yeah, I'm using the 16 ohm. Alright, 
anyway. So I don't exactly want to take this all apart because of all the work that went into this, but um, what I'll do is I'll cut some of these cable ties and just give you an idea of where the wiring's going and the components that I added. All right. You can always go back and add or replace the cable ties. So this was coming off the original output. And I've got that connected to the selector switch. So I'm either going... Okay, so I've got the speaker. So the speaker output is here. Yeah. So I got the speaker output selected and uh, connected. Connected to the, so this is a double pull, double throw toggle switch. And I've got the speaker coming off, so you can either select, when it's on this side, it is connected to solid state output. And then if it's connected to this side, then these come, this comes from the other two wires which I believe go to the yeah they go to the the uh, output transformer so it's probably not the greatest design since it looks like the twos are being driven all the time and when I'm selected for selected for solid state the output transformer doesn't have a load, so not the greatest design. I probably wouldn't do that again. Um, I mean, with um, the space charge tubes are a little bit more forgiving, um, but just sitting there without a load, um, I don't believe is good for them. What else do we do? So I tried to use shielded cable, so it's coaxial cable essentially, on all of the signals. Yeah. Arm an overview. Make sure I don't cut any wires either. Not sure why I've got wire nuts here. Kind of unprofessional, I guess. They work, but look silly. Oops. So I believe those are the. Well, another good thing, or another cool thing about this is you can use the same. I think the. Um, the heaters are the same voltage, they run off 12 and a half volts, 12.6 volts. So I think I've got all the heaters and the plates, plate powers, um, all being delivered with this twisted pair. Yeah, the blue and the brown. So that's why they're all common here, but still, now they're coming off the where they come from. Man. I got everything coming to got 12 volts connected to this board, which I added. And a 
bunch of spade lugs here, or rounds. And then, yeah, probably hard to see. I added a circuit board here. Oh. Oops, hopefully it didn't break anything. So let's pull that off and see what I did. <clears throat> Button head screws, Allen's, and there's that was tight. So I'm on it to the heat sink of the solid state IC amplifier heat sink. size or what? How did I manage to get this in here? So doing it this way <clears throat> it does retain the the stock jacks, so these these stock jacks. Which, uh, and this one and uh, the other 12 gauge is similar. So speaker, line out, headphone, CD tape in. All those are retained, I believe. So that'll be the intent on the new one as well. I'll fast forward through this so that I don't have to... Actually, why don't we pause? And essentially, I gotta get the screw out. I don't have much room. So I'll be right back. So I got the screw out. And... What I really wanted to show you is the uh, the circuit that I had to add. Sawa. I know, Sawa. I know. I know. Papunta na. Okay. Time to eat. All right. So after a little dinner and. I got some of these wires pulled apart a bit. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm using for the for the reverb driver. Looks like I'm using a LF three four seven, which I think is a quad op amp, and then also a transistor. Can't really tell. I have to look. It's probably an NPN. Um, like a 2N um, what, 3904 or something like that. Um, and I've got, I'm using all one microfarad 100 volt capacitors, uh, polypropylene. Looks like, yeah. Um, and then I've got, looks like, of course, most of the resistors or a lot of resistors are in here and it also looks like a Ceramic cap and then also electrolytic cap. I'm probably using for um, cathode bypass for the cathode resistor on uh, one of the triodes. So all this is is a piece of uh, perf board with plated through holes and you can see that. Hard to see, huh? It's all basically point to point, so it's all some insulated wires, some bus wires, but basically just 
painstakingly connecting all the components where they need to go, making sure not to create any critical shorts or, you know, make sure everything is going where it needs to. And then I really packed it on there, I guess. Yeah, there's still room. Still could fit a few more things on there. So I think that'll be it for the circuit at the moment. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, whatever. I'm not going to do the exact same thing for the new amplifier, but it'll be probably similar. Um, what I'm thinking at this point is instead of doing a low voltage space charge circuit, I'll probably add a more of a classic high voltage circuit, but definitely some sort of spring reverb, either another one of these. Uh, can you see it? Another one of these, or I think I have uh, a couple other around. Or just buy a, I forget what they're called, Accutronics, I think. Um, but yeah. Oh, one more thing. Um, I'll pull the. Let me pull the chassis out of the other one so you can see the comparison between the circuit boards. So hopefully you can see that the circuit boards are, they're basically identical. Layout, components, everything, they're identical. <laughs> there might be a few tiny little differences, but same thing. So I, I uh, originally thought that I had replaced some of these op amps, but they're the same number as these, so <clears throat> looks like I didn't. So to me, it'll be interesting to see. I think this is the overdrive one. Um, we'll, we'll check. So I'll pull this out. We'll look at the traces and I'll also try to uh, to make a to create a decent schematic of the new one so it'll be good to, to have a real schematic instead of a ugly sketch like I'm normally what I normally do um, but I do remember replacing these so these I think are the diodes in the feedback circuit for the overdrive Hi, little kitty. So, Cloud wants to get to check it out too. So yeah, cool stuff, having fun. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Happy modding. What's up guys, Josh from Unique Amps here with an